<clears throat> All right, and I hit record, but I have not done uh, the sacred thing of having a camera that is high quality. So, here we go. so as you can tell, I like keeping things kind of dark here. Um, just my vibe. Just my vibe. But either way, I'm going to be like in present mode. Um, for most, usually these days, I, I pretty much do the whole ring. I'm on like present mode. I mean, I'll show my face like it's a, and there are certain points where like I really want it. It really depends. Um, so yeah. Um, Is okay, it's going. I did not hide your last name, did I know? Okay, we're good. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so let's share the screen. Interesting. Um, yeah, as I said before, you have an exact Sun and Taurus conjunction. Very, very militant. Very, very royal. Um, and Taurus is uh, one of the royal stars. Shit, am I kind of tired? Hold on, let me, let me feel into myself for a second. Give me a second. I know this is weird. We're going to start reading. And I, I just, I, I, I can be like, literally like 30 seconds to just feel my energy. Okay. Okay. I'm good. I just need to check on myself because I just wrote a really long article, but I am straight. So, yeah. Um, Sag rising. Like, Antares is rising, but it's really that sun that's like. Within like what was like point zero eight or like it was it was like so close to Antares, um, which is so significant. Um, and it's one of the royal stars, so I usually don't start by going straight to the royal stars, but you know when this happens, you have no choice. Um, it's really good for for honor and riches. Um. You know, it can make someone kind of like aggressive, like like violent. Um, you know, they, they can gain a lot through. It's kind of like King of the Underworld. Like think of Pablo Escobar as a really, really like good example of someone who who's like full Antares or Andrew Tate. Um, you know, they're they're like they're they're, they're very polarizing, right? Uh, but also it gives like a ton of mental alertness, like very strategic ability, um, lots of courage. It creates daredevils, basically, right? People who just are willing to risk it all. And you need to watch out for your eyes, like physically, the right eye especially. Um. No, where is this other one? It's in size, but I always think the entire is very like scorpionic. Like it's all about like the truth. The underworld, you know, it's really like like you know, it's very intense, all like very intense, dramatic, like just wants to get to the bottom of everything. 
super passionate, fiery. It can be very obsessed and very compulsive. Um, also, it can be ruthless and very primal. Um, but yeah, like I think it, it makes it creates trailblazers. Um, sometimes can be a little bit pushy, also. So it's like you're rising in your sun, very impulsive for sure. Like reacting out of instincts. Um, and yeah, like that, that rebellious revolutionary energy. And um, they can be like like tricksters and teasers. Um, yeah, more kind of like Scorpio energy, like the phoenix, like you know, rising phoenix from the ashes type of energy. But also, they can be self sabotaging. So and very very hot headed, but also very self governed. Like autonomy is so important to 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 this the Sag and just like especially to Antares, like. Like um, you know, with your tenth house tour um uh tenth house Saturn, you know, you won't be someone who who necessarily like wants to get pushed around in your day in your day to day life. Um <sighs> excuse me. You know, I did that on purpose. My voice is being annoying. Um, okay, so yeah, with sun, let's see. Yeah, so there's lots of focus. I'm reading here, by the way. Um, focus on a passionate self-projection of the ego and attraction of combative situations and challenges to their authority. Okay. So, and the ascendant, which is less intense but more important. Riches and honors, violence, sickness, benefits seldom last. To be driven by passion, obsession, a potential to be abrasive or even ruthless. But really, it's like it can just be like very powerful and it can be like intimidating. It can be, it can be like very intimidating to. To people around you, you know. One second. So it's just very. Okay. So um the fact that this you know this side energy energy and the energy is in, is in your first house um is you know and that Neptune is also right uh rising is indicating this kind of like a merging if you will of um I I really want to start stop saying um my goal my life goal yeah. Um that was not funny at all, Jesse. Okay, but really yeah, so 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 Neptune so so adding Neptune to, to to all of this is very, very um important because Neptune is a planet of high spirituality and, and high and idealism and um all that you know, um compassion, empathy. Like the highest energy of Pisces, if you want to think of it like that. So, um, to have it rising in the first house, like it can, it can, it can have lots of effects. But it can, it can definitely make one, um, have like a, a less. I don't know, like, like it, it can it can create like difficulties around how one sees themselves, um, for sure. But you know, adding the Sagittarius, it combines like this like high philosophy that you know, you know Sag is all about, you know, um, individualism, 
Um, or no, it's, I mean, it, it is in a sense that's it's more Aquarius, but it's all about freedom is what it was, what it was meant to say. I'm having uh, uh, energy drink right now, by the way, so I'm going to sharpen up. I don't do that that often, but. Because I woke up from a nap, like, I, I did that research, and then, yeah. Okay. Um, and, yeah, so, so, so Neptune, the first house, you know, over here on the Ascendant, um, yeah, there, there, there can be a, a certain vagueness, um, but, like, a, a really huge goal for first house Neptune is to take their dreams, um, like, their actual, like, you know, physical dreams or their, um, you know, their highest, highest ideals and to put them into reality, you know, um, to have them like represent, um, be, like be, be, be represented. I said, I'm like, represented in their being in their everyday life in their, in their persona, if you will. Okay, so I need to pull. Okay, so you have um our bounds Mercury. Interesting. So that can make one very very intelligent, especially yeah, it's in it's in, it's in uh, Cancer. Um, let's see if I see any of any parallels. No, nope, 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 nope. So, um, Venus and Mars and the square. Okay. So, hmm. Well, the square by element. So, yeah. Um, you know, that, that's, that's very, that's, it's very interesting for intelligence. Um, for the aspect grid. Because on one end, you know, you will, you know, zero degree Mercury is, um, it's like entering a new, a new stage of everything related to like communication, intelligence, like a new karmic stage related to that. So you almost feel like a Mercury at retrograde, like where, where, um, they're really discovering a new kind of karmic way of, of, of of connecting with the world on that kind of cognitive level. Um, it can also, you know, zero is the, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a child. It's, it's a degree of, you know, of innocence. So let's see what Mercury is at, is aspecting. Oh, it's got the nice trine with, with Saturn. That's one of the indicators of intelligence. They're both zero degrees though. Um, but that Saturn um gives memory, right? And Mercury gives um it, you know is, is an indicator is the planet that rules how how we our our cogni our cognition, right? So having in, in Capricorn, which is a, a earth sign that is very logical logical based, it likes to take things step by step. It likes things to be proven typically. It's it's a it's it's a good it's a good Mercury. And I, I think the zero degrees gives it some level of mutability, some level of, 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 um, like some Mercury Capricorns can be kind of stuck, you know, like the scientist who, or like the very intellectual person who, who just like 
you know, can have all the proof of astrology being real in front of his eyes, but he just like his ego won't let him because of the, the cognitive dissonance and just don't want to want to allow himself to go there. It's like that, but the zero degrees, I think, it makes it easier. I swear there's this energy drink. Like, I never, I like have like random things. With like, like I like didn't drink an energy drink for like three or four years, and then I just like last like two months I started like, like have like I'll like have one, you know, like if I if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a little bit tired I'll, I'll have one, and like but like I like having less coffee, you know, which I've always been like a big coffee guy, um, but I'll always be a big coffee guy, but I don't know, there's just these energy there there's these these uh energy drinks out here that tastes so good like oh my god it's it's, it's called hell it's the worst thing ever but it there's a fun flavor that's just like, so good i know it's really so bad for me but it's just ah i don't know taste the sugar um so as i was saying um you're so okay so 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 sun you know um also conjunct neptune yeah so 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 one one of the issues the potential issues can be about identity Id identity and seeing yourself clearly there can be difficulty with that and um say that again yeah so it's it's really really important to uh to God, to dive into spirituality and service and to really integrate your dream life into your everyday life and as a Sagittarius rising you will naturally like feel as though life is this grand adventure and you're just taking part part in it and you and Things are meant to kind of just move forward and move forward and move forward. Um, you're meant to experience a lot. When your time is up in one place or in one situation, it's wise to recognize that and to not hold on. That's typically the, the Sag energy, right? And of course, Sag is very connected to traveling, right? It's different cultures. You have abundance of Sag energy because your moon and Leo and your Mars, conjunct your moon, are in the ninth house, the house that is ruled by, you know, that is connected to Sagittarius, not ruled. So that, you know, the, the Leo moon, <clears throat> it has a very nice relationship with the uh, Sag sun. They're both fire. They try each other. So if you, I always do this metaphor, if you split yourself into two people, two version, two like sides of yourself, the yin yang, the sun, the moon, the feminine, the masculine, and they both, you know, were two captains sailing the ship that is you, they would both be agreeing on what direction to go. Very adventurous. Um, you know, the, the, the Sag part and the rising, of course, also. So all three of them are agreeing and just really wanting to get a, get a lot out of life and like learning and teaching is of course, which is <laughs> the irony because, you know, we're going to do all these lessons together. That is such a huge thing. I, that is such a massive thing for you. Um, expanding your wisdom expanding your sense of truth you're you are willing to go to whatever length is necessary like 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 kind of how you felt with me you felt things you know you you, you felt things were right you, you you went through my my instagram and you knew and that's you, that that's that antares energy that you know how how you you just made that decision like like 
boom, that's that fire, right? That's that fire, that decisiveness. That's why Antares can make such great leaders once, you know, as long as they cannot be overpowering. Um, and I just given up on the um thing. I know it only annoys you if I keep repeating it, so I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna give into it. So having the moon in that ninth with Mars in Leo is going to give you that push towards, uh, towards it's going to give you an emotion, not just like, you know, being a sad son where like your life purpose is really related to, uh, and then where's Jupiter? Cause that's your ruling planet. It is in the eighth house. Wow. Esoteric. So that now we have like a whole new, like another, another dive. I love, I love this. I love when there's like uh, a Scorpio and a Sagittarius mark uh, marker in a chart. That's very interesting. That that are you? Yeah, and we we both have the same Jupiter. Really, literally, we have the exact. That's so interesting. Oh my god! I just realized that. Holy shit! That is so interesting. To the degree, or like I think mine's two or one degree, Cancer. And Jupiter is about teaching. You, like, that is unbelievable. That is unbelievable that we have a Jupiter conjunction in our chart, and I'm going to be teaching you. Like, is there anything more perfect? I don't know. That's amazing. Especially with your Jupiter falling in 8th house, which gives you natural talents to the occult and the esoteric. Uh, it gives you, I always I always refer to Jupiter in 8th house um, as having this lantern. This lantern, you know, there's these areas of life that freak everyone out, right? Death, everyone's scared of death. So many people are. Uh, People are afraid of, of going through the, 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 the rebirth and the transformation and, and really accepting their true selves and looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, you know what? I fucked up. I'm just joking. Or you know what? I'm not the best me right now. Oh, that's one example. You have that flashlight to be able to see your shadow, but not only your shadow. Also, the underpinnings and the, the psychological underpinnings of the human psyche in general. Jupiter 8th house is, is an outstanding placement for a teacher or a psychologist, excuse me. Um, so, also, it makes one very, very, very... It makes one really, really want to learn about the underground, the taboo, anything taboo. Um, it expands sexuality. It expands just the, the willingness to go and, and, and learn about the esoteric, which where I was thinking, where's Pluto? It's conjunct your north node. These are two of the planets that I look at the most as you will learn as we will learn about. And maybe you caught me that Pluto is not, or the North Node is not a planet. I guess Pluto is what a dwarf planet, but in astrology, it's a planet. Planetary point. Um, 11th house, Libra. Interesting. Interesting. South Node is in Aries. So you have all these supporting energies of your South Node. And do you have any air? No. That's a tricky chart. That, that's that's a tricky part of the chart. And then uh, you have Moon square Uranus. Nothing difficult with the Sun. My guess would be a good relationship with the Father. Maybe a more a more um, difficult one with the mother or whoever the least dominant parent was. Not necessarily. Let's see. Yeah, and. Not necessarily like 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 maybe just like contentious, but not like 
like like mean spirited because um the the south node has a nice you know the past life in indicator right right it has a nice aspect a trine to the moon and also the sun does it's actually a grand trine so it would it would it would indicate that you have good karma with both of your parents um which is very good but does that mean that everything was always smooth no because moon conjunct well moon square uranus is the big one right moon 13 degrees leo square uranus 13 degrees scorpio but before i get into that let me just explain how how this is all connecting um so yeah the ninth, the ninth, the ninth house moon it really really makes that person have an emotional need to you know be in relationships that help expand them um to have their life be a life where they are constantly moving towards um answering the three the, like getting close like getting closer and closer to answering the three big questions who are we where do we come from where are we going and the the sag also just like the sagittarius archetype it's like the gypsy it's it's a, it's it's a, the three stage right it's, it starts it starts with the gypsy who's just like all just exploring like just doing like just free flowing like just going everywhere like trying so many different things, the gypsy who becomes the teacher, who then becomes the philosopher, right? That's kind of a very Sagittarian um, chain of evolution. Evolution. So when you have the moon in the ninth house with Mars, it means you know Mars conjunct moon. It means that your 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 moon in Leo, which also moon in Leo, talk about that for a little bit. Um, the thing you have to watch out for Moon and Leo is is, uh, is 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 requiring too much attention. Often that's more of a childhood thing, uh, needing to be the center of attention and so forth. And and um, the the big lesson with Leo Moon, which we'll talk about, is authentic self expression. Right, it's the idea that it's it's moving away from external validation towards an internal validation um like the whole idea of art therapy where you are creating this art for the sake of yourself for the sake of your own understanding so it's important as as a, as a leo moon what, what i love about leo moons my mom's leo moon is that they have like no matter how old they are they always have this like very youthful spirit um because leo represents the inner child as i said so they, they 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 almost stay young mentally and they're very very you know laugh they, they, they like that they, they like they're, they're just fun you know they have good senses of humor usually not always um and with your square to uranus i imagine you definitely do and being a sagittarius which is known as a very funny and off the wall sign um i imagine you're quite funny but yeah, Leo Moon, the Moon is 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 it represents our emotions and it represents our what we really need to be happy and to be secure. So a Leo Moon needs attention from their lover. You know, they 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 would not do good with <laughs> they wouldn't do good with someone like me, who is the the opposite. For example, uh, not to bring myself into this uh, um, reading, but I'm just as an example like. Um, I'm someone who requires a ton of space and is the complete opposite in relationships, you know, like, and a Leo moon would want lots of closeness. So, uh, or, or not, not necessarily lots of like emotional closeness, but at least a, like they, they, they really want a partnership where they, they feel very proud of their partner and that par partner feels very proud of them where they're praised, where they really, really feel seen, right? Because Leo moons are sensitive, I'm telling you. Like, people people underrate the sensitivity of Leo moons. 
um, and they can get really, really down. And when they're down, because unlike like a Cancer Moon, right, or a Pisces Moon, if you follow me, which are our water signs, are highly emotional, highly sensitive, but they'll 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 they'll, they'll keep quiet. Leo's fire, so Leo, you'll know when they're sad, usually, right? And the square to Uranus, as I as I continue, um, and the conjunction conjunction with Mars, which makes you have Mars square Uranus also. Um, well, first of all, I'm gonna say that Mars square Uranus, you need a, you need to do a martial art or some type of like some some type of consistent um thing that just kicks your fucking ass. Like that's just one something, you know, something, because that's like a that's you know I have a series of most volcanic placements in astrology and by the way just so you know right now i'm literally meditating with two crystals and my eyes closed to try to concentrate as much as i can on this just telling you um but yeah um it, you know it, it made my series it, it's a very volcanic placement and you know when, when leo mars is a very very strong mars Mars is a planet of action. It's like the leftover animal instinct that we all have within us that sometimes get repressed. But when you have it in a fire sign like like Leo, it don't get it don't get repressed. It do not get repressed. Um. So. Having yeah, I, I want to get back to more about the moon, Leo. Um, and then and, and speak about the aspects it's making with Mars and Uranus. That's my next few steps. And then I want to relate back to well, I, I've already kind of related to this sun. They just go well together. But also look at how much like down here you see how much fire you have in your chart. Now this isn't an exact um like real indicator, but because like it, it doesn't it takes in, in, into consideration some asteroids you know and some some points that don't matter as much as others and houses it doesn't weigh, weigh it as much as it sh in the right way but i can just tell you fire moon fire mars fire rising fire sun um well it's his left where's venus venus is water Ooh, and scorpio Woo! and then um you know, you have like a zero degree Mercury and Earth. That's like barely Earth, you know, and then no air whatsoever. So, you know, it's a chart. And a lot of times when I see charts like this, I find that that person does well. I literally just did a reading for, for a girl who had, who, who had a very a similar chart. And I almost predicted it before. I was like, hey, like, I was, I was doing the her, I was not only doing her her chart, but I was doing the compatibility chart. But I hadn't seen her boyfriend's chart yet, and I was like, you know, you do really well with someone who has like, just like, like you know, you have all these fire and air aspects. You do really well with someone who has lots of you know earth and 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 water, and you know not only earth and water, right? So I, and I literally just like like basically just explain this guy perfectly. I mean, just like without ever like ever seeing anything about him. Um, so for you, having so much fire, having, I guess, eh, yeah, just just like it 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 would be good to have someone who 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 has some you know just any who. Like basically, you you don't need to be with someone who also has a ton of fire, is what I'm saying. Because that can that can just make you know that that can just make things burn. Now, does that? I never tell someone like be with this sign, be with that sign. But that's just a t something that I see is that people often, when they have like a lot of one element, they they date someone that doesn't have might have like a little bit of that element like maybe they'll have like a moon sun conjunction but not like an excess and they'll they'll make they'll they'll be the, they'll be like their rock basically right because you having so much fire a lot one thing i i noticed about people who have lots of fire 
uh, usually younger, is that they, they might smoke a lot of that green devil's lettuce marijuana. Um, and that's because there's just so much energy. And that's why, why I told you like there's this big need to work out because there can be this nervous tension that can be created. So there's this big need to, to, to yeah, to, to get that out. Um, and yeah, some people who, who have threats like this, when they're younger and less spiritually, spiritually mature, they they just uh, can't handle themselves and they become stoners. Anyways, um, so yeah, emotional need to travel, emotional need to travel physically and metaphorically. Traveling physically, uh, experiencing different cultures, whether that's, you know, whether, whether it's befriending people who are from all different types of backgrounds, um, just, you have the, this fascination with the world and uh, just, just, you know, with everything around you. Right. And really it's all like, you're really, really trying to learn. Like, like I said, like, like a huge, like you're really, 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 really trying to learn, 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 learn. Because your North node and your Pluto, which are like the two points that represent um, the North node is the metaphoric mountain never climbed in past lives. It's like a destiny marker. And Pluto is the shadow, right? It's it's where you need to go deep within your darkness to you need to conquer it. And when you do that, you it's kind of similar. It's like you reach like that like the highest evolutionary intent or result. So the fact that they're conjunct is very very interesting because it means that Pluto is opposite your south node which speaks to past life trauma. So so this is something me and you have in common. I have a square with Pluto in the south node. Uh, it's opposite yours. So that means that um, past life regressions could be very, very powerful for you. Um, or just in some way, and it can be through astrology, through wisdom, because you might, I, you know, I wrote a book called Pisces Live Nine Lives, right? Uh, I forget if you said you ordered it. I think you said you ordered it. Um, but basically, I I talk about how I never really knew why I felt so like so traumatized in this life because the events that like my childhood and all that like wasn't like that bad. I mean, like there's some things that weren't great, but like it, it you know, I grew up, I grew up in you know, I, I mean, come on, like, it, it 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 didn't it didn't it it, it there, there wasn't a correlation. It didn't link up. But then the fact that I saw that I had the south node square of Pluto made perfect sense. So you have it opposite. So that you know is a past life trauma trauma marker. Now um, the fact that it's conjunct your north node, guess what that means? That means that your biggest biggest. So there's there's a lot, right? Your biggest, and we'll, I know I'm, I'm going in, in circles here in puzzle. Trust me, it's a puzzle. I'm putting piece here, piece here. And I'm like, oh, I was going to put the Uranus piece here. No, I want to go here to start. No, no. And I'll go back to that. And it'll all make sense. But basically, um, you are here to fix your past life trauma. And to, with your south node in Aries, right? In the fifth house, you which is very similar to me. Interesting. I'm Leo first house, which is very similar. Um, there's a past life tendency to be the leader, the commander, the pioneer, you know, the assertive one, the dominant one, which is really, really complemented by your Sag and your Leo in this, in, in this incarnation, right? But, the thing is that that has led you into some trouble by being so fearless. And let's see what the square is. No. Twelve. No. No. By being so fearless. Right. And, you know, even Eris conjunct the South Node, which is about that 
fearlessness, that volcanic eruptive energy, right? Um, and fifth house is about like just authentic self-expression. It's Leo, right? It's it's about fun. It's about being ultra creative. Um that pissed some people off in this incarnation. And there is a loose square from the south end to Jupiter. So, um, you know, and your Jupiter retrograde is speaking to you really want, like being very, very internally, like your, your, your philosophical, your, your, your philosophical conversations that go on within yourself are so deep and so profound. Right. Um, but they're meant you, you kept a lot of that for yourself um you kept a lot of this special talent for yourself and there was a little bit of selfishness there or a, a potential to not that maybe not be selfish but but to not compromise and trust me we have the same shit. i fucking hate this <laughs> um i have my my north node in the seventh house we have like a very similar like uh south node north node um like explanations like basically we've both been kind of like about ourselves about our creativity kind of superstar energy um you know creative very very cre big creatives like where we're like caring more about our life purpose than necessarily um you know compromising in a relationship and now in this life with your north node in, in, you know pluto opposite um the south node it's literally saying that yeah there there is there is some trauma there is something that really like really fucked you up and that you probably have felt in this lifetime that you maybe you haven't been able to put your finger on and this might be a massive aha moment or maybe it's something you've already um experienced uh and also i do have a, a psychic that i don't tell many people about but um I would recommend that you do a session with her too, because she can maybe uh, fill in some 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 of this color with actual events. And I trust two psychics in the entire world, by the way. So, with the North Node in Libra, that's basically saying in eleventh house. That's saying that you know there's a big need in this lifetime for you. On okay, so it's very multiple. It's it there's two, there's two meanings. The first one is that you need to learn to compromise and to be more team oriented and to be more relationship oriented to, to make more compromises, not to, 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 to balance out the areas and leave access. Right. And we'll learn about this in our classes, the, the six axis being like it's on a scale of zero of Aries to Libra, zero to 100 full Aries is like, I don't give a shit. I do everything on my own. I'm not willing to compromise at all. Independent. Like I'm not giving anything to anyone. Right. Now, Libra, full Libra is like like the pure energy of codependency. You know, I can't do anything without my partner. Oh my God, I'm broken. I'm nothing without him or her. So it's about finding that, that middle ground. Now, that's one part of it. And also, um, you know, from 5th to 11th, that's from Leo to Aquarius. So that's the axis of moving from me to we. Um, and really in this lifetime, doing things for the collective. So now the third part is the fact that with that past life trauma, you have to overcome that, or there's this big need to overcome that. And once you do, then you open yourself up to this, like Pluto's like this dense ball of energy. So when it gets released, it's like, imagine like digging deep in this really dark hole that is your psyche. It's the black, it's black, it's black, it's ugly, it's dark, it's dark. And you have that eighth house Pluto, so, or eighth house Jupiter. So you have a lantern, but it's still dark and ugly. You're still not, you know, if you're underground mining, like in one of those mining places, and you have a lantern, it's still, it's still dark and, and scary, right? You just, you're just able to see it more. Um, but once you do get to that bottom, you keep digging, you're digging, 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 metaphorically digging. And then there's this golden opening. 
and all these jewels and then everything all that path that you that you dug right well guess what happened it opens up on the other side right like you climb from america to china through the middle earth <laughs> um i've never thought of that one before but really like basically you find all these jewels and these jewels is gold and this is actually like linked to like you know mythology um persephone myth i'm not good with this stuff by the way with the myths but yeah like really through that dark night of the soul you find the great your greatest gifts your greatest your you know metaphoric gold so then we, so 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 basically it's through that and how is that done? Well, where's Scorpio? Well, house. So to answer your question, Pluto is ruled by Scorpio, um, which rules your 12th house, the house of your past life. Surprise, surprise. So you have a, a very interesting chart that is very, very karmic. Um, oh my God, this guy keep, no, my friend keeps calling me. One second. He's coming to that. I need to prove to this fucking guy. Second. Okay. Yeah, imagine like your friends called like your friend from like kindergarten's called you like three or four times in a row. And I don't I don't drink. I mean like I very rarely drink. <laughs> you know, I think he's calmed down, but um half of those were like him calling me like who I am on like a Saturday night. I'm like doing readings and stuff or like writing articles and like working, you know, and he's like a successful scientist. Um, it's just very interesting to me. This is kind of like a little side note because I know that we're, that, you know, you're doing classes, you, you know, put your faith in me, which is a great, great decision um, as you will find out. And um, I, I just find it interesting that like, you know, you got the scientist who who went to so much school, but he, you know, I can just tell he's not, you know, he's not happy. And I'm so happy with what I'm doing that like it's a Saturday night and I'm I'm doing a reading. You know? Um I'm completely content with it. Not right now, but like when like I think he called me Friday and Saturday. And then also last night <laughs> and the night before. And uh, no, no, not the night before. This is the four times. Anyways, so um, yeah, he definitely like. But I sent him a screenshot, so I don't, I don't want my friends to think that I'm like just like ducking their phone calls because I'm like actually working every time he freaking calls me. But maybe it's like a karmic message for him. Who knows? Maybe it's uh, meant to kind of 
wake him up to the fact that, you know, he might not, not be that passionate about what he's doing. And I think he, he kind of is, but not really. Not like me. And it could, you know, and it could be you. I'm, I really mean that. I really, really mean that. So anyways, back to what I was saying as I was interrupted by Ben. Um, yeah, so so this is, it's so it's a very very high evolutionary intent. Now the areas to do that is through your um, like th- th- there can be like a trauma with with respect to your friends, um, you know, to your circle of friends and to your to all, and, and 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 it can create this fear of of truly of truly trusting other people, right? Of truly trusting others. And um you know, the eleventh house is yeah, it's about it's about um it's about it's about friends, it's about um groups and organizations, it's about um lots of things, right? But but I really like to think of it as the you know the one that comes after the twelfth house, which um or after the 10th house, excuse me, which is, you know, speaking more to the, the aquarium qualities of, you know, just this very humanitarian, like, like big picture, you know, like just like this, 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 this need to have um, these massive goals that take a lifetime to, to complete. Right. So, that's 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 really a way that I like to think of of the eleventh house, and um, having Pluto in your north node there, and sometimes you know, and sometimes to complete those, it takes help from other people. Got a crystal. So um, so yeah. Uh, I, I think that 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 a, a big part of your journey is gonna be the accumulation of 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 knowledge, of course, of wisdom, not just knowledge, of wisdom, of higher truth wisdom from different sources, different cultures, this down the third. Also, and then and you know, and also ninth house moon, you might have an emotional need to like actually physically move because Mars is there too. So you might actually like really like you're from Idaho. You actually might really want to get out of where you're from. Um, although Mars isn't like very permanent, so it just might might make you just like you might just feel like these urges from time to time. Like I need to get the fuck out of where wherever you're living now. I need to get get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. You know, and um, like I need to like. Kind of just, you know, go and and be and and spend time like away from from the culture culture that you're used to, um, to you know, it's all about broadening. So that's something me and you have a lot. We we really have that in common, which is really really nice. Um, but I can't believe our Jupiters are, are can jump. That's interesting. Um, okay, so. Also, your anti-vertex. Ooh. See, this is like, I'm just showing you like anti-vertex in astrology is in moments of need. No, like, look, it'll explain it here. Or does it explain anti-vertex? So, yeah, the anti-vertex and Capricorn would draw you to those who can help you structure your feelings and pre- present them to the public. Um, at times, the important changes in your life, there are moments of crisis. Those who have the sign cancer or the moon strongly placed in their nail charts will be drawn to you. These people will comfort, nurture, and protect you Hold on. Okay. 
So yeah, basically the way I look at the anti vertex is like my Saturn is twenty is exactly on your anti vertex. So it's like during times of need, um, and Saturn is like also you know it, it it's karma, right? So uh, it's just interesting that that your anti vertex is on my Saturn, right? Like, which is a very serious like like kind of authority like like it's 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 me and and I'm the teacher, right? I'm the teacher. Which is very interesting because Saturn is Jupiter is a teacher, but Saturn is kind of like the, like it's 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 the authority, you know, it's 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 the res, it's it's the responsible one. It's it, and I have to, to step into a Saturnian role, right, and 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 teach you and, and get you this 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 divine not the divine knowledge and wisdom, and so it's probably a very crucial time in your life right now. Um, it's just it's just like by it just shows the fate at play, but. Yeah, just a little something I saw. Um, okay. Um, I haven't even gotten into the, the twelfth house. I, I was I was getting there, and I kind of wanted to like wrap around and then do like the square from the Uranus, the the Mars in 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 the Moon. Um, but overall, like. We understand the North Node stuff, and we'll, we'll obviously be able to talk a lot about it. But yeah, things th there can be lots of fear about doing things and trusting other people when working, and you might have your own system and be very, 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 very just powerful in what you do. But being able to like find other people that you can work with is 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 very important. And very key to your highest growth. Now, okay, so into your twelfth house. So and we'll start to talk about love in a second. At what minute? Let me, let me let me guess a minute. Um, one hour or two minutes. No, it's not there. It's not there. Oh, fifty six. I'm off. Okay. So the twelfth house ruled by Scorpio, um, which you know, Pluto rules. Um you got Uranus, Vesta, um, Pallas. And Venus. So Venus is about, and Venus is square Saturn. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. So Venus is square Saturn. And Venus has to do with how we love ourselves. Self-love. So you pass your Saturn return, so it's obviously, you know, a lot easier now. But there is definitely a time in your life where self-love did not come easily at all in the least bit. Um, and so Venus and Scorpio, it, it can make someone value, it can make someone value the esoteric, the occult, the death rebirth transformation that the or that process right that 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 ev that evolutionary karmic process of of uh allowing yourself to parts of yourself to die which um definitely creates uh situations where you might really want to escape like if you're if you're living which i don't my intuition says you're not um living like where you grew up but if you are like you, you might really 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 want to get, get out of there um but basically basically you know venus is like is their love language but it, it, it starts with self-love so scorpio um venus can create lot lots of intensity in that journey towards self-love and when it's where saturn Saturn is the is the planet 
of repression and restriction and melancholy. And um, so when it has this, this, this square to Saturn, which is already in a very difficult place in the 12th house, it makes it so, it makes it so, it's this, this you know, after 30, things get, get a lot easier in the self-love and, 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 and even like the external relationships, the, the actual, ser actual serious ones start to come. But it makes it a real struggle until that point uh, for for those uh, important relationships to come. And a lot of people who have who have this aspect, like they they just struggle in their love life um, until they either get the sign return and shakes the fan, or something happens very karmic that pushes them into being an uh, into a new way of being, or they you know before that they meet. You know, like the, with their free will, they push through it. One thing I'll teach you right now about astrology is that things can either be handled with aspects like that, with like this, um, or placements internally or externally. You get a chance to handle everything internally. If you don't, that's when the event and the fate the faded events and um you know the more difficult um occurrences that force the change come up so uh, you know i need to write that down as an article idea Okay. I just have to shut that down to get it. So um yeah. Venus Scorpio and is Venus besides the yeah, no aspects. Besides that, it's in the twelfth house, so that's the house of, of, of um self undoing. So there can definitely be like a like uh, early on self-esteem issue um venus and scorpio people they tend to like really really value very very in, like their love language is, is very intense and can be a lot for a lot of people to handle but then here comes a psychological split the square with uranus will make it so and then you know with all your other energies all that stage energy um which is all about freedom and expansion, all that. So there'll be a side of you that like Venus and Scorpio, um, when it relates to love, it wants to merge to become one with the partner, like on some Tantra, like soul bind, like just like two souls becoming one level energy. Right now it can be a lot for a lot of people to handle, but the split comes with that square with Uranus when things get like, like um, when you feel when you feel locked up in a relationship, you might start to feel like caged up or, or caged up is a better, better term. Like if it gets too like if 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 you're not given the, the sufficient freedom to fully individualize, um, you'll 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 feel this deep need to break free of of the the um relationship i mean and it's not, and it's not even the, the square it's just the the fact that they're you know that they're um that, that the that the the moon is square uranus right venus is not square uranus but venus is in the same is in the same house separated by 13 degrees so um yeah like there'll, there'll be a part of you that like 
you know, like there's there's a huge huge freedom, like, um, part to you. But then like the North Node, right? The the evolutionary intent, the mountain never climbed, the the, the destiny mark is really trying to get you to 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 be more really um relationship oriented and to to um to find peaceful relationships that um you know conjunct pluto where you're able to do that that exact scorpio venus thing which is um work through your own shadow in the arena of relationships but also friendships because it's 11th house yeah with the venus um and scorpio yeah it, it can just be very intense and uh you know it it, it 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 just makes you like on one hand like want you know you'll need a lover that, that gives you like lots of attention and um you know sees you for all the amazing kind of like 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 no like no like like sees you for for your true true highest value and you know moon in in leo likes to be complimented it, it likes it it likes to keep things light you know it likes to have fun in life right but uh the venus and scorpio in, in the 12th house which also is very very esoteric i must say um it's very very it, 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 it's another one of those like lantern energies right and it gives you like access to like the collective unconscious and this ability to, to really feel the undercurrents of what's of what's what's going on when you tap into it which it, you know can give psychic powers and whatnot but in love yeah it can be difficult uh until the sun return to find the right partner and um it can create issues around um self-love um, which then um, can make someone feel very misunderstood and create difficulties, you know, with relationships and um, lots of setbacks and restrictions in 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 the area of 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 valuing value, valuing the self. And it goes back to that Neptune in the first house, which once once again can cloud your own perception and idea of yourself of your identity right even though it's it's very like fiery and, and sad and all that and powerful antares so uh another thing about the 12th house is the the best way um and yeah it, it can create like these these like karmic cycles right this, this like this like this like cycle in in love life that that just um that can be very frustrating but the good thing of it is that every aspect as you'll learn from me every hard aspect is meant to be turned into a superpower um so when it's integrated venus and saturn creates the ability to have very very deep and especially in scorpio and long lasting relationships because uh, Saturn represents like the glue that keeps relationships together, so it's, it's it actually um, you know can make one very very a very like it, you'll be a very committed lover. Even but like you have to have that sense of like um, freedom within that. Um, And then yeah, it goes back to like low, lower, lower Venus with like the manipulation and like the power struggles and and the fear of losing the other person and 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 kind of play, playing not like not playing games but um like just just doing things that like wh where you feel like you have to like keep absolute control of the relationship or else uh, there's this fear of losing the other person. So with Pluto, like the whole thing is about surrender. So that's like a big part of your chart is ultimately like through the death, rebirth, transformation, surrendering to the divine and to your role, um, which is, you know, very multifaceted as I, as I, as I said before. 
Um, let's bear this for a second. So then, so, so yeah, as I said, that gets a lot easier. And by, by now it's, it's probably become a lot easier. And, uh, when you're, when you, when you're, um, doing selfless acts of, um, service, that's how you really, really gain that, that, um, that true internal power. And, uh, you learn to value that really deep, deep side of yourself, which, um, you know, isn't really shown by having all that fire, right? So it's really about um, the more you lean into your spirituality, the the more your your love life benefits, and just like your self esteem and everything related to that, like the 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 higher awareness comes. Now with Uranus in the twelfth house, and this is a very like if I don't know how long you've been following me, following me. Actually, I do know not not that long, but if you go back, I don't know when in my post, um, there's one one list that's like most, you know, I said this before, like most psychic, most intuitive placements, Uranus in twelfth house, that gives the ability to, um, be psychic, be like clairvoyant. Essentially, and, and and receive downloads, and um, so like when you're able to 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 find Earth. So when you lack Earth, the key is to find a routine, a healthy routine. I need some water really quickly. To find a healthy routine. Well, um doing things that are related to earth, like hiking, gardening, um, and, you know, lacking air would also be like breath work would be really important. But when you're able to really be in that stillness, you can receive downloads from that just come to you and you're like how would i know that how did i know like like how did that just come to me and a lot of these can also come in your dream life right um you can have a very very vivid dream life so dream journaling can be very very powerful too and with 12th house um you know one of the keys is you know, one of the, the, the hacks of both house energies is um, is Neptune rules video cameras. So like like filming yourself, I tell this to a lot of clients, like how by um, quite literally like filming yourself or talking in front of a mirror, um, doing like a daily Nancy vlog that you have to show anyone you start to understand yourself better and it's actually like it's like that plus like the being a service so yeah it's very powerful and then um if we click on these we can see you know palace and then in the 12th like in scorpio it just gives yeah this real you see here like um really want to get, get to the bottom of things a very like psychologist detective energy which goes along with a lot of what i've said and yeah like exactly this like an ability to understand communicate the spiritual teachings um and you may be required to make personal sacrifices so that your wisdom is used for the good of, of the whole now with Vesta, which is like um, another one of the big asteroids, it's um you know it, it speaks about like a commitment to 
spiritual value to a path of spirituality, spiritual values, right? Uh, dedicated follower of a spiritual way of life and really, really delving into the unknown. And Scorpio, once again, like really, really being um, committed to your, to your work, but more like, you know, your spiritual work. And um, it says sexual morals may feature strongly as you seek to either break existing sexual morals or oppress sexual urges behind. So yeah, um, the twelfth house is powerful. Um, so like more with the love stuff, you know, your Juno is in Sag, so that's gonna like that's kind of like like another of the four major asteroids. My favorite one. I just wrote about it, and it really speaks to how your ideal partner is someone who um, you know gives you freedom to be yourself, and who also you know kind of you know maybe they're from a different culture um uh, or they're just very 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 curious about the world and about about that same kind of wisdom hunt that you're on truth slash wisdom hunt that you're on so yeah um now going to what i haven't talked about yet Moon square Uranus. Ooh. So that's a tough one. That either that that one's probably your toughest aspect. Um the Venus square Saturn would, would be up there too. And um so when you have moon square Uranus, it makes you very rebellious. Um, it can also make lots of like very rapid mood swings. Um, yes, it's also like another indicator of like psychic abilities, like moon, Uranus, uh, aspects in general, especially when, when integrated. But, um, it, it can give us like almost like this real, like intense need for stimulation, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it, it kind of speaks further to like the need to have someone like a, 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 in a partner, someone who is exciting, who's not boring and who is very, you know, very individual, individualized, you know, who's not like conditioned, right. And who helps you in that sense as well. And it gives, you know, a very, very, one second, I just got a text about, it might be about my license, hold on. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, um, the the issue with this sometimes, and this can relate to like love life, is that it can make one like, um, very drawn to like the new and the shiny, grass is greener type energy, right? Um, and very like, lots of like emotional compulsions. Um, but it makes one very open minded makes one want, like open to like experimenting with like tons of different things. It can make one emotionally like, impulsive, as I said before. And um, yeah, it make it also makes one like really, really want to move a lot. <laughs> so there's another indicator of that. Um, and also because the moon represents the public, it makes you really stand out in the crowd in a very notable way. And because, you know, Uranus is, is, is just like, is changing so much, it, it, it can make you appear like very rebellious and disruptive 
almost reckless to, to some people. Um, and that can lead to issues with like keeping long term commitments, which you know I said I said before with, with the Saturn and Venus how when integrated that 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 can really um, you know turn into a superpower. But early in life, I I can imagine that being difficult. And a lot of times this relates to like uh the mother and um maybe like uh not receiving you know what you really needed from the mother, a sort of like detachment. Um but yeah, it, it just makes one like get bored really easily, kind of. And as a Sag, you know, Sag is always looking it's 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 the it's the adventure, right? So it's always looking for 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 you know what's new. So you, you we see the challenges here, right? We see how you have all these planets that are supporting, like your your fire moon, your fire sun is supporting your south node in Aries. So it's it would be very easy for you to slip slip into your south node, but then they're done that. Um. So yeah, very very important to. To, to make that 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 purpose purposeful push towards um you know connecting with like minded people um and uh yeah learn learn learning to trust and also like Pluto in the eleventh house sometimes there can be a a a, a tendency to like um, you know, with the Pluto, like I said, like it's about finding that internal power, right? Once you go through that that death rebirth transformations, the snake shame, the skin, you you you, and think this is why things like astrology are so helpful for people with charts like yours, is that you find that power inside yourself, and then you don't rely, you don't you don't look for it externally, you don't feel the need to control, and whatnot. But yeah, overall with this one, there can be like a struggle between like um, emotional nurturing, which is split I was talking about earlier, and uh, living this like really like kind of independent, detached, exciting life. So it's like that's a, a very, very important balance to have. And what else about this one? It's very, very good for like being very inventive. Um and um really it really makes one want to have like it gives one a very, very like unique mission in life. And also like Antares, I have to tell you, when it's so close to your son, that can you know, that can be an indicator of fame. It really can. I'm not I don't say this often. But it's so close to your son that, yeah, it really, it really can. Um. So yeah, like like you really need like a stimulating career, so like, you know, anything from psychology, entertainment, astrology, you know, whatever it is that really, really, and your mid heaven. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so 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 you need something that that like where where you're really able to express those unique talents, and uh, where there's like a very stimulating environment. And the good thing is that your Mercury in in um, Capricorn is gonna give you this ability, even though yeah, um, oh nice that okay yeah, and the trine with Saturn it's gonna give you this ability to, um. To have a, a, a like a, a like a very capable brain for for like once you start things to really really follow through with them and to like create systems, which is going to be very very good for our, for our teaching sessions. Okay. Um, may it have in the eleventh house that speaks further about how like you know your life purpose and and. Um, you know what you're really meant to do is 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 
related to um, working with other people. Um, you'll enjoy, you'll, you'll want your career or your dharma to, 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 to be like, you'll, you'll, like if you're like working, for example, you'll, you'll, you'll want to work in, in harmony. Like you'll, you'll, you'll seek to have a very harmonious um, and creative, right? Because it's Libra, it's Venus. And it's it's uh your midheaven is ruled by Venus in twelfth house, so yeah, like something, right? Like astrology or psychology is, is perfect, right? Um, and it really helps you. The more you you dive into that, it really helps you kind of get um into that water, into that that water, which is that 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 um compassion and that uh, intuition and it opens up those energies. Now is Mars. Yeah. So then Mars spray Uranus. So those are the three really hard ones, right? Those are the three really hard ones. So Mars spray Uranus is a little bit different. Um, obviously the moon, any, any asked hard, hard aspect from an outer planet to the moon is going to be very difficult. But Mars, and I told you before, this is the one where you like need to work out. It just creates a lot of energy. Like it gives an abundance of like creative and inventive energy. Um, uh, but it's it it needs to be harnessed, right? It's like this raw explosive energy. So um and being that Mars is in a fire sign, you won't be very, you won't be shy about like really like, like when it comes to assertiveness and 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 really like kind of going towards what you want in life, right? Like just like you did with me, you made that snap decision, you know. You saw like in your your sharp in, intuition, just saw saw like this is an amazing opportunity, like this is what I want, this is this is you know, and you know this is the divine timing, this is what's meant to be. Um, but yeah, it, it really like, really makes you like a breaker of tradition. Like you're, you're really very, very rebellious. Um, it gives like very, a very, very strong urge to, to, to break, break out of like what the family might expect from you, um, or society might expect from you. And that can upset family. In friends, in society, <laughs> um, and it can be anything from like your sexuality to your profession. All these things can, can cause controversy, and this is also a very sexual placement um, to have Mars in in Uranus in that aspect. So, um, one really important thing is like is and it go, is is that. Um, it's this impulsiveness, right? That can come from this. So that's why it's so important when you lack that earth to find that ground, to find that 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 routine that that you're able to 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 go to, um, and it feeds you on the physical level, spiritual level, emotional, mental, intellectual, everything. But with this, a lot of times you can be like, yeah, like rash behaviors, um, acting out of anger. There can be like also like another thing of, with this one is like like the, the potential for accidents. Like and you know, you, you also have Jupiter. What's Jupiter doing again? Jupiter is opposite Mercury. Yeah, I guess that's not too crazy, but still. Um you know, that can make one. Yeah. Also, another thing that's really, really good for wealth to have Jupiter in the eighth house. So it's really, really good for benefiting from other people's resources. Like uh, it can make someone like marry rich or come from, you know, get an inheritance, something like that. So it's it, it's kind of like a guardian angel around, around money. Um, and the reason for that is that you've, you've really uh like there's people who have like lots of like money karma but there's other people who have learned those lessons and the divine 
which you know this is God's language astrology, is showing that you know let's not make this like some like let's not let's let's not make her in this lifetime have to like spend so much of her energy right um, hustling grinding working eighteen hours a day because there's more important things that her soul is here to accomplish. So and I believe a lot of those are for the collective. There can be ostrich. Uh, how do you say that word? Ostr ostrich. Ostrich. I always miss this word. Ostrich. Like ostrich. Ostrich is ostracization. Like where you get kind of like kicked, like kind of kicked out, or just like removed from a group, or just feeling like misunderstood is very common with uh the Uranus squares, the Mars and the Moon, uh being emotionally misunderstood. And um, yeah, it's all about learning moderation, as I said before. But at the end of the day, like it's impossible to contain this like electric energy, you know. Um, so it's like through either creative or physical outlets that this uh, works best, and you're able to. Um, Move past it in the best way possible. One second, it just happened. Okay, but like one thing with Mars Uranus is that it makes entertaining and fuck people. I mean, just yeah, very very like um, controversial. But in, in you know also uh, Antares is is very controversial. So um, yeah. Like there's, like I said, a big need for change and excitement. Um, so there can be people who, with this a lot of times are, you know, until they they understand that 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 cycle, um, they can get, have multiple marriages. Um, and yeah, it's about it's about really finding your tribe, right, and finding like like a you know, communities that are more open minded and where your your true authentic original self can can really flourish and you don't have to like always like be defending and proving yourself people who just don't get you because one, one of the shadows i haven't said this about about sagittarius in general um and i'm a sag moon of course is that they 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 feel like they and it's true they've spent so much time um you know fi like you know finding their own their own truths that like let's say you get really into astrology, right? Um, there can be a tendency to try to push that onto other people. And the, what's the expression like? You can bring the horse to the water, but you can't force the horse to drink it. So it's like really about learning restraint around that too. Just just with Sag karma in general. yeah if there's any way where you're like forced to conform like that's a no a no fly zone no good for you all righty okay let's see, let's see, let's see. and then you have moon trine um chiron so that's speaking to like you know the potential of you being a healer i have to get into the chiron in a second sun trine mars that that's literally like you know just um when you when you when you see a goal you just go towards it with, with pure vigor and pure and so much so much energy so so many resources but there's a real real sensitive side so so, so I didn't really talk that much about the Neptune conjunct Sun which is very important too in Sag and um that's gonna actually help out a lot that's gonna actually make you an empath um it's gonna make you, even it's it's gonna it's gonna really actually make up for the lack of water, even though you have you know your moon your uh, Venus and Scorpio, um having Neptune on your sun is gonna make up for that and it's gonna add compassion empathy, and just really this ability to feel what other people are people are going through and and with the eighth house Jupiter. Just this ability to just like see through people, 
you know, and to really, really understand like what someone's going through just by kind of looking at them. So that's awesome. Okay, that, 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 that. Mercury's also trining. Oh, wait. Yeah, Mercury trends Chiron, so that means that like through your your learning, your communicating, you you're able to heal through your speech. Um, and Moon is is trying Neptune. I said Chiron, but it's Neptune. Um, which is literally a beautiful placement. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful placement, and um, it's like a natural talent of just. It, it, once again, this this so 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 you see how like I I was talking about like you see how like I'm I'm putting all the puzzle together like first I was like you know there's like a lack of water really more a lack of of it's really more a lack of earth and air but the water is taken care of because Neptune is aspecting your moon and your sun and um with the moon um. The trine is is really just about and how many degrees you said two degrees off. It, it it's 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 like it's like psychic ability. What else can I say? It's like you know, it's 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 um just high, high intuition. Um and inspiration too artistically, like like this like I could see you being like very, very artistic. And um, really, really caring and sensitive too. Really, really caring and sensitive. This is what the Neptune's doing, right? But then it brings up another thing with Neptune, which is boundaries. Um, and with Venus in 12th house, there could have been like a lack of boundaries in love early on, um, especially when like if the Saturn square like made you like value yourself less. So. Yeah, that that's like a, a lifelong lesson is, is is learning boundaries and also like with, with this much Neptune, there's a, a a big need for you to kind of be a recluse sometimes, you know, for you to kind of like because you gain so much, uh, in solitude. So it's not saying that you're meant to just like be alone, like, like, but you need to have re like relationships where you can, like, be in your own energy. You know, because a lot of your greatest breakthroughs will come when you're just sitting, doing whatever, whether you're meditating or just, just, you know, just chilling, just doing whatever you do, going on walks, and boom, things just come to you. And yeah, this like <clears throat> it makes you, your friends really appreciate you because you, you you have this, like I said, this ability to really understand them and make them feel better. And yeah, it's 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 one of the psychic indicators, Moon Train, Neptune. But in relationships, as I, and I said this before, like there's a big, big need for harmony and peace, like anger and like unpleasant energy, and like it's and just like in the world around you, in your work environment, in your overall environment where you live is very, very important. Uh, very, very, very important. It will affect you a lot. But um, with this. The whole boundary thing, it's just like so important to avoid deceptive people. And also toxins, because it rules, you know, Neptune rules that too. But you, you um when I think of moon and try Neptune, I think of spiritual protection. So um like negative energies. They, they can drain you if you let them, but you do have this like this this great spiritual protection. And I can intuitively feel you agreeing with that right now and thinking of times where that really came through. So yeah, like it, it's it's like really like your 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 energy and time is best applied helping other people. Um and I've said this many, many times. You know, having a life of service, um, working, you know, on on an emotional, spiritual level with people. Um, 
and like yeah this is like another amazing one like i said before for for musical artistic talent anything any creative talents right um and literally you can make a living using your intuition and your psychic ability which you know it could be it could be it's a muscle it's something that has to be learned learn to be trusted but you have it like some like when i say, some people don't have it you have it um so this is like really really good for astrology tarot or any other form of like uh, spiritual guidance and uh, yeah just because like a really like rich imagination um you know you may have had when you were younger some interesting experiences with this and some people when they had that they like shut it off like quote unquote imaginary friends stuff like that um so it's really important to only share the side of yourself with people who you really trust and who really understand it or else it can it can you they, people can like create create like a negative energy onto it so yeah and like i said earlier like um you know taking that dream that you know that dream life like that 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 Neptunian like idealistic life, um, and 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 making that a staple of your personality, it's massive. Okay, so, and then you also have Mars trying. Yeah, so you have Moon and Mars trying trying um. Uranus, um, or Neptune, excuse me. So, Mars trying Neptune is interesting, right? Um, because it, it it's another one that's really, really great. Um, just, it, it's very, it, on one level, it's like very, very romantic. Um, but it's also another like very psychic indicator, right? And it makes you really want to fight for causes that you really believe in. Um, and you have this real boss energy, like this real leadership energy. Your Antares, you know, you have that. And Leo Moon, right? Leo Moon, it gives like a like a like it's fixed fire. So like you like. Leo Moon people, they they just have this ability to, to just power through things, and um, unlike Aries, for example, Aries Moon, they might like start something and then and then move on to the next thing. Like Leo Moon, it can be really passionate about something for the long term. There can be like a fiery consistency. Um and yeah, Mars and, and Neptune trying it's just like is like a magnetic attractiveness and uh yeah, like strong spirituality and creativity. It's another really, really good creative one. And yeah, I would say this one the main theme is like fighting for the underdog and, and serving in a selfless manner. And it also gives like this like uh undying faith. This undying undying faith, right? Yeah, you know, what you know, even even when young, like just like this this closeness to the divine. So yeah, I definitely see you as someone who like fights for, you know, causes that you really believe in and um like one one key here is that like um like there is, like I said, there is a strong fighting spirit, but it's very important not like, and this is why the whole like, the importance of like getting that 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 energy out and having that outlet, right? Like that physical outlet, it's like, it's like kickboxing or whatever, like something like like that, or something creative, but something physical, um, because it's very bad for you to 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 have physical aggression, whether it's your words or whatever, um. 
Like, let's say like you're like really into like animal rights, right? For example, and then you have a family member who like disses them. There might be like an inclination to just like fight back, you know, but it's really better to like be more diplomatic, right? Um, with the royal stars, regulars especially, which I have, uh, you have Antares, but there is this theme I've seen of like because you're you you have this star energy, like people being jealous of you, and um, if when people wrong you, like the need to like not retaliate right and, and that can that can take many different forms so yeah like 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 just like fighting negativity with kindness is, is, is a beautiful thing yeah and then and one other thing i would say like with partnerships is just a just like really genuine passionate people um, who are honest um and yeah it just creates like a very like like yeah like i said before like like this just this mystique in relation to sexuality which i never really like to talk about that much but you know in the chart all right what have i not covered okay So, uh, okay, Ceres. Ceres is inside. So Ceres is kind of like your second moon. It's like how you feel nurtured and how you nurture others. It's through you nurture yourself by gaining wisdom, surprise, surprise, and by being independent, surprise, surprise, um, but also by giving that same freedom and that same wisdom to other people when they're wanting to hear it. Let's see what it says. Okay. You prefer your loved ones to provide you with a sense of adventure and freedom. You feel cared for when you are allowed to sp allowed space to explore and reach for your goals. You appear as a sympathetic and com comfort com comforting person. You like to care. My brightness is wait. Not because my eyes are hurting. My brightness is so high. That's so much right now. I can actually read. I did this yesterday too. And uh, you like to care for others and they are attracted to your warm nature. You may need to learn to nurture yourself as well. Well, whatever. I, I, it kind of goes against what I, but my interpretation, but whatever. Um, hmm. so yeah, we talked about the South Node of the Fifth House and just like how like I see an Aries. So that could have like created like a very like Mars ruling like... Um, you know, like 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 disputes with the mother early on, and kind of like a explosive, uh, early home environment that's very karmic because the south node's there. Um, although it's in the fifth house, so it's, yeah, um, it can be difficult. But th the fact that your your moon and your sun are trying, usually that means that the parents, um. Are still together usually it doesn't necessarily mean that like you know you're like and, and like i said like you have like um nice karmic aspects with both of them so um i'm just wearing something really quickly sorry but yeah like like like, like I, I i like my sense is that there's like lots of love but like then there's just some there's just some like disagreement about reality, you know, about like about what is. Um and yeah, just like Aries South and like I said, um a big need to <clears throat> a big need to kind of yeah to 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 to, to be more uh yeah, like to, to to be less fiery and less like reactive. That's an, another interpretation of, of it based on what I've seen in your chart. 
And um Yeah, like almost like learning to be that diplomat, you know, that I was talking about before. Like I'll give you an example from my life that this happened a few days ago. So I do a bunch of these readings, right? Uh all the time. Um, you know, if you haven't booked the classes, you know, the wait list is like always like 50, 60, I don't even know. I, I, I don't even really count it these days. It could, it could be it could be more. So <clears throat> if I tell you that there's only been three times out of I have no idea how many readings I've done, a lot, um that people have complained. And um this one of the one of these happened recently. I got a message from an individual who was like, I can't hold it in anymore. He's a double Pisces square Neptune. You'll learn what that means later on. But lots of like, you know, self-delusion and confusion, stuff like that. But I'm not dissing her. Basically, she said some pretty insulting things to me. She kind of like and and I, I even looked back on the reading and I, I, I feel like I killed it. Like I really felt like I did an amazing job. Like I re watched the whole thing. I was like, I was like, you know, like I did like I totally like she wasn't listening hard enough, you know? Like that was like my my kind of analysis was like she 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 like she didn't give it a chance because like at some like um like I'm like very like <clears throat> random like uh and i'll go through periods and i don't really do it anymore actually now that i think about it but like i mean i i still, like because i just i guess I, I maybe i just like do so many readings i just like know everything not everything but like i just like <clears throat> like i've memorized like not memorized but just like i don't really have that need but like i like um there's times where i i'm just like oh my god like I, like even though I can explain this thing like perfectly, I have this book and I want to read this like section because it's just like I want to hear it in someone else's words, you know. And just by me like reading, I like like certain parts, she was like mocking me and she's like, "You were little like literally like reading and like like the last thirty minutes of the reading, like it was like a you know ninety minute reading, a long long reading," <laughs> and um. Basically, all I did, my response, and I, I told you that we have a kind of similar energy with like our our uh, our south node north node, <clears throat> is that as much as I wanted to kind of keep it real, I took the higher ground. I did. I did not respond to her negativity. I realized there's no point, and I have very high karmic values around if anyone is dissatisfied with the reading, I'm going to do what I can to make it better. And that's what I did. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely sent some voice messages that, and they weren't mean, um, but they're, they're kind of more like defending myself, but then I just deleted them all. And I just kind of told her like rewatching it. And then I just sent her like, I think like a hundred, minutes worth of voice messages like a, like i like i just like uh i just gave her like a completely new reading and then you know she was happy with it and she and then that was that nothing more no further no karma created and that's what i'm talking about with you like not creating karma that's unnecessary because you are antari's royal star special and people sense that and get jealous. It's just a fucking reality. Okay, let's put my face back on. How, how, how long? Oh my god, 153. Oh my goodness. Hmm. My eyes look so. Like, this computer has been like wrecking my eyes because it's so bright. <clears throat> so I barely slept last night, but the Red Bull saved me. Um, I barely slept last night, but I did have a, a nice nap, so it evens out. Anyways, okay, so let's let's kind of like get through this. 
I wanted to give you like a really like kind of long, like just really like 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 showing you like lots of details. Um. So yeah, filling in blanks here. Uh, one other thing, yeah, about the, the the Neptune first house is that there's this real ability to create like a fantasy world of your own, <clears throat> but there's this big need to like like I say clarify, um, you, you know who you really are, like your identity, and there can be identity crisis, um, when you have that. So, um, yeah, and like the, the north north node south node stuff, like I said before. It's a, it's all about serving humanity, letting go of um, you know, possessive and passionate personal relationships. Um, in order to like have that like detached um. That like detached you know. M service, because when you're always in those, it's pushing you back. And um, yeah, like I said before, like it's all about cooperation, past life tendency to want uh, your own way and to force your opinions onto others. How many times I said that? Uh, so yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's about developing selflessness, the ability to share and a sensitivity to the needs of other people, which is really what air is all about, right? And lacking air, breath work would be one of the best things for you. So, okay, I've touched on most things. I haven't touched on Chiron. So Chiron in the six, six is your job. So, um, yeah, you could, you could, you could literally be, you know, a, a healer. That could be your thing. Um, and <clears throat> this is Venus. Yeah. And once again, you know, Chiron ruled by venus in the 12th house so another indicator of of like a 12th house which is like spirituality and all that career um yeah chiron in the sixth house and fourth chiron and taurus people it, it, it's like a crisis of values really right um experience early on uh lack of self-worth which goes back to like that saturn square venus um and sometimes people like overcompensate by like accruing possessions and stuff like that so and and also it's about the body and they can like like feel, like sometimes feel like they're not beautiful if you're doing things like yoga and like really like getting that that physical routine in uh healthy food all that stuff is really really important um and yeah it it, it can make you um like and, and also really learning to like trust like you know like the kind of like sensations in your body because like you know the intuition is so linked to the body like you feel like, you know, like learning about like somatic psychology and just like, you know, what does it mean if I feel, you know, something in my stomach or like, what, what does, you know, like, like it mean if I have like, um, you know, a pain in my lower back or, or, you know, my shoulder, what does it mean that to, to have like a lot of stress in your shoulders and like, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, being able to like teach that to other people, you know, uh, six house Chiron is, um, also, like about like um, potentially feelings of physical inadequacy, right? Um, there could have been some kind of physical pain, sickness as a child, and um, there's typically like a search for like this like self healing, um, which then once you learn that leads to being able to heal other people. So, um, yeah, like sixth house is the house of like, you know, your daily activities. So Chiron there, it can make, make you a healer in terms of your daily activities. <clears throat> so no retrograde planets besides Chiron and, and Jupiter. So the Jupiter retrograde makes that, that philosophy like way more like internal. I, I like Jupiter retrograde. But no, uh, no, the 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 inner planets retrograde. Uh, descendant in Gemini, <clears throat> that speaks further to, um, you know, just needing a partner who who is you know interesting and mixes things up, plain and simple. And then you know, uh, bl uh, black uh, black and Lilith, which is is uh yeah your self defeating, um, tendency. 
being in the seventh house in Gemini, it how I would read this would be um, the potential to jump ship too early, like in relationships and to like the like I spoke of it earlier, like grass is green on the other side type energy. Also, like 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 and it's just you at like your lowest vibe, right? Um, things like gossiping and speaking about other people on their back, lying, deceit, those are like the lowest energies. Um, so it's like learning about those um, helps you kind of move towards breaking those uh, self-limiting kind of tendencies. And also it, it relates to this, the kind of trying to like talk people into, into your way of thinking and not listening to other people's opinions. So lots of stuff there. Learning to, to really listen, which is like uh, very air energy. So one, one another way to really like um, help out the air is to make a, a a real, real deep decision that I am going to really try to listen. Because fire can be all about like the talk, the talk, the talk. But um, yeah. Air likes to kind of like exchange information. So it's like, think about like within your, um, within your conversations and whatnot, like the, you know, what's the balance, right? What's the balance um, between like um, how much you're talking, how much you're listening. So then vertex in the eighth house that they, in cancer base, that means that like, you know, in relationships you will, um, you know, have like this very like kind of like loving nurturing um almost mothering energy to you like the way that you kind of act but in the eighth path more importantly you will learn a lot like your doorway to higher awareness is through these like really intense plutonian experiences the death of earth transformation is just a cherry on top right um it could also be like sexual stuff experiences. Um, so, yeah. And um, okay. So yeah, and then part of fortune is conjunct the moon. So that literally is like saying part of fortune is like a kind of like your flow state. It's like kind of like a, a gift. It's based on a calculation. It's not a plan. It's like sun minus moon plus ascendant or something. Like it depends on whether you're a day or night chart. And basically if it's conjunct the moon, it's a clear, clear indication that your um that your that it, when you're like at the highest manifestation of Leo, right? Which is like I said, like, what did I say? Like when, when you're doing things, not for the views, not for, for the external validation. I did say that, uh, but for, you know, your own like growth and your own deeper understanding of yourself. Um, and when you're in touch, very, very important when you're in touch with your inner child and in relationships that support that, um, that's when you're really in your flow state. And then furthermore, in the ninth house, you are in your flow state when you're uh, growing, when you're learning, and when you're traveling, when you're traveling physically and metaphorically, as I said. Saturn is very well placed for you. It is zero degrees, so that means that you're starting a new karmic chapter in this lifetime. Um, it's a very, very nice Saturn, you know, in Virgo. Um, so that makes one very hardworking, good at problem solving. Um, it helps kind of like that lack of Earth a little bit, even though it's not a personal planet. It can make one work in the field of health. But uh, so in the 10th house, it's the best place that you can have Saturn. Although in the first 30 years, it can give like a big year of public failure. And make like make you like like and create lots of setbacks. Like when you try to take a step forward towards your 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 career, but when your career is based on these higher spiritual principles, um, like and not on ego, that's when everything 
comes forward. But, um, you know, so you, you approach career with caution, um, and it just makes you very hardworking, very respectable in whatever profession you choose. And it's kind of like boss energy. And you have like these early setbacks, right? But in but after the sound return, which you passed, obviously, um, those setbacks start to go away. And then you just are you have this like really, really uh determined energy in the tenth house of, of career of Dharma. So yeah. Okay, let's see now if there's any big let's stare I need to turn my fucking brightness down. My eyes are gonna just explode. Let's see if I see any important besides we already saw Antares did I see any other noteworthy um asteroids or big stars the, okay if you saw the numbers how close there so white moon's doing that it's not quite there I literally O two. I'm gonna show you this just so, just 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 so you can see what I'm looking at. <laughs> so you know I'm not crazy. Cause just look at how I'm trying to like see the numbers here. <laughs> oh my god. So that is two fifteen. And then I literally can't see. 23. So that's 11. Yeah, so Midheaven doesn't really have anything. Oh my god, look at over here. Oh, now I can kind of see it. I have like a spidey that uh, it went away. Oh, yeah, because it's zero degrees. It's... Yeah, so it's eight. So that's not going to be doing anything. So moon. <clears throat> Part of fortune was there. Mars. Jupiter. No. They have to be really close conjunctions to matter. Okay. Oh, shit. I forgot to say. So, yeah, when you have uh, Antares rising, so you have Aldebaran, which is like one of the, another royal star on your descendant. One of the best things possible. Um, so that is, uh, it's really, really good for, for, for just for luck in general. Um, it can make you really, really, luck, really, really lucky when it comes to like your partner. Um, but overall, you know, you'll, you'll have this energy of, of, of Antares and Aldebaran, which, um, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, Aldebaran is, is, is definitely about just like money, like really like about like, like just fortune and, and just, um, and, 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 and so many, so many good things, intelligence, um, wits, um, cultured, all these things, but it's like two. It's like you know, it's like it's like less than two degrees away. But it's not like right smack on there, obviously. But it's still meaningful. <clears throat> Excuse me. These don't matter. 
And nothing left in my face. So, yeah. Ooh. Let me talk about that. Okay. And you're lucky that your, your Venus is uh, 26, not 22, because that would be Serpentis, which is very difficult. So, I'm going to, just for you, this is one of my longer readings in a while. I'm going to check one thing. I'm going to check. I'm going to get rid of all this, first of all. I, I, I Actually, I need to check uh, one other thing. I have, like, another list. <laughs> um, just see if Venus has any... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Still none. Yeah. I still want to see, like, um, so Ascendant is 11. I don't know where you saw that. So it's really just Midheaven to Libra. I just want to, like, open up another fixed star list. I'm really going above and beyond. <laughs> um, so two. Okay, I found one. Ten, so, M87, black hole astrology. So, at two degrees, Libra is there. What does that mean? I don't know. But it's like a... Paul's M87, the Super Galactic Center. There's that center's in Sagittarius. There's another one. This is another black hole. So it says the most significant manifestation is sequential monogamy or codependency and dysfunctional relationship patterns. It gives intense powers of attraction, charm, sex appeal, and commitment. However, the partner feels captured, engulfed, and consumed. The native, native can be very needy. And demanding of time and energy. So I, I talked about that with the Scorpio stuff. And it can make them jump from relationship to relationship, per, uh, obsession with finding the perfect partner. Don't take this one like too, too deeply. But then it says, thankfully, most people turn into spirituality for answers. There is realization that some childhood wounds must be healed once the energy sucking, demanding behavior is eliminated. An evolutionary stage of development allows room for a soulmate. Some will also become healers, teachers, agents of enlightenment, and promoters of change. Ooh. And then it doesn't even say any of them in heaven. That's so wild. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Six Scorpio. Nope.
Send zero zero cap and zero Virgo. And three. Right, it's just like, I don't know. Okay, so back the okay, so okay, let's see if there's anything. Here. And the last one, which is where your Jupiter was. Nope, nothing. So that is it. Very long reading, but, you know, I will be doing lots of classes with you, and um, I just want to give you a bunch of just a bunch of details, but, like, the way I'm going to teach you is going to be a lot different than the way that I gave this reading, so don't get overwhelmed. Um. It's, there's going to be a simplification that you're going to see. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy I was able to get this done tonight um, so that we can get started as soon as possible for our classes. Yeah. All right. I shall talk to you later. Ciao.